I bring to you Psalm 110. <laughs> shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauty of holiness, from the womb of thy morning, thou hast the Jew of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not rep repent. Thou art a priest forever after, after the order of Melchizedek. Mel the Lord at thy right hand shall strike to the king in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the hidden. He shall fill the place, the places with the dead bodies, and he shall wound the head over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the, the head. They end the 110 psalm con containing seven verses, all for the honor and glory of God.
in the right hand of him that sits on the throne, a book written within and on the back side sealed with the seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the, se to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in the earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to seek to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the, li the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I behold and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sit upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before him, before the Lamb, having every one of them hooks and golden vessels full of orders which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, sing, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and had made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I, beheld, and I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times, ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Wash, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and as such as in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said Amen, and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Here ends Revelation 5, contains in 14 glory, Lord of mercy upon us, Lord
Praise God. Greetings in the honor and glory of God to the Reverend, the mother of the womb, Shepherd, all co workers in the vineyard of God. The lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. And they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for matter. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower, whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse the language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth and they ceased building the city. Therefore its name is called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them over the face of the earth. Here I pause at the ninth verse in the honor and glory of God. a day that I and you did not expect to see but because of the mercies of God we are in the land of the living yeah. where our prayer and our supplication can be made today you know a couple of days ago I was home and I got an inspiration and how it came is that you know I was thinking of a very tall structure and when I was thinking of it, you know, I was like, if you had to build a building so large up in the sky, the most go down a few depths well. Because with heights, there is also depths. Yes. It must be balanced. And a tree doesn't just grow tall like that. The roots of the tree must grow deep into the soil to establish a foundation. <laughs> And then I, immediately I go in front of my computer and I started typing. And I started thinking of what scripture I could bring. You know, and I, I started to search Genesis. Search the story of the Tower of Babel. And while I was searching, you know, a topic came to mind. And I said that's what I would title the lesson 
today on taught lessons from the Tower of Babel. And that's the that's the topic for today. On taught lessons from the Tower of Babel story. And today, you know, Psalms 119 and verse 35, 33, 35 says, Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I will keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. And today, it is my prayer that my honest prayer that God would open our minds so that we could understand His word and make our hearts receptive so that we can receive it and attain spiritual transformation that would be evident in this mortal realm. I want you to stand and sing the hymn with me, Spirit of Faith, Come Down. Let's stand, please. Spirit of faith and love, reveal the day of And let us do the God and Lord and Yeah. 
We all need the spirit of faith to come down and explain his word to us. No, because human intelligence is limited. There are limits to our understanding. And there are only certain things that our logic can comprehend. That's what Isaiah said, no man can by searching find out God. For who he wants to reveal himself to, he would reveal himself. And today we have to ask the Spirit of God to dwell amongst us. Jesus said, Behold, I go. But when I go, the Spirit and the Comforter would come and teach you all things. Amen. And today we want the Spirit of God to come down and reveal the thing of dying. Uh -huh. And today, you know, as I stated, the theme or the topic is Untaught Lessons from the Tower of Babel's Story. A lot of persons see the Tower of Babel as no, a structure that men came together and built and God wasn't approved of it so God, you know, caused them to not understand each other and then, you know, that was it. The work ceased and that's all. But then we move to the story church. Mm -hmm. Now, the biblical story of the Tower of Babel is chronologically placed after the history of Noah. His ark, the great flood, Noah's deliverance, God's covenant with Noah and creation, as well as his descendants. And if you were to look at the chapter before, chapter 11, the 10th chapter of Genesis outlines the nations and the kingdoms that originated from the loins of Noah. The man of God. For we all know that it was only eight people that were saved by that. Noah, Noah's wife, Noah's three sons, and his three sons' wives. Eight people. And eight is also the number of regeneration. So out of those eight people came all the generations of the world, all the descendants of the world. And chapter 10 tells us the gives us the outline of Noah's descendants, all the nations and kingdoms that originated from the loins of Noah, the man of God, through his three sons, and his three sons were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Mm -hmm. And in three different verses of chapter 10, that's verses 5, 20, and 31, it is said that the children of men were separated I want you to listen carefully. It is said that the children of men were separated according to their language and their families into the nations. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we could read exactly what it says. In verse 5, it said, and it said, indeed the people are one. Sorry, that, that's verse 11. Okay? Let me get verse 10. See, there is something I want you to understand here. Because there seems to be a gap between Genesis chapter 10 and Genesis chapter 11. And verse 5 of Genesis chapter 10 said, But these were the isles of the Gentiles, divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue after their families and in the nations so when the bible talk about tongues here it talk about the language so if you're going to use the language to separate them into nations then the language cannot be the same the language has to be different mm -hmm. am i making sense yeah true right and in verse 20 he said these are the sons of ham after their families after the tongues in the countries and in the nations right the issue of tongues come out here difference in the language and then lower along in verse 31 he said these are the sons of shem after their families 
after the towns, in the lands, after the na nations. So it's obvious here, according to the account given in chapter 10, that the people was of a different language. So the people were not speaking the same language. Mm -hmm. But let's get back to chapter 11. Where it says, the people of the whole earth, as I said in verse 1, the whole earth had one language and one speech. So Genesis 10 is telling us that the people were of a different tongue. But in the first verse of chapter 11, it's saying that they were of one language and one speech. <coughs> there is a problem here. Yeah. And what I believe, church, is that somewhere between the 32nd chapter of Genesis chapter 10 and the first chapter of Genesis chapter 11, there was a big gap for such vast change to have occurred. Coming from Genesis chapter 31, chapter 10 and verse 31, where the people was of different language, to Genesis chapter 11 and verse 1 where there was of one language and one speech there must be a lot of things that happen between those times that the Bible does not tell us about just as between Malachi and Matthew there is a, a big period, a large period which we call intertestamental period where the, where the, the, the Greek empire is spoken of for there was the Babylonians, there were the Medes and the Persians, there was the Greeks, and there were the Romans. The Old Testament end with the, the story of the, 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 the Medes and the Persians. And the New Testament begins with the, the story of the Romans. So the Bible, you know, between the Malachi and Matthew was the rule of the Grecian Empire under the leadership of Alexander the Great. And to the church, we have to understand the Bible that to read. So, somewhere, church, between Genesis chapter 10 and Genesis chapter 11, between the outlines of Noah's descendants and the Tower of Babel story, the whole earth had one language and one speech. And my soul, like, my soul objective here today for this sermon is to dissect the Tower of Babel story, highlighting some of the untaught lessons embedded in it. And the sons of men in Genesis chapter 11 were building a city and a tower. So they were, they, were, they were not only building the, the, the Tower of Babel, they were building a city as well. And according to the account given here, the entire earth was involved. For I said they came from where? They came from the east. They joined it from the east. And they were found in the plain of the land of China. And China was part of the kingdom of of um, his name slipped me, but one of the descendants of Noah. And in that land of China was a land or a community called Babel. And that's where the tower was being built. The tower of Babel. Because it was in that land that the people of God were building the tower. Good, yeah. And church, they were of one language and they, were, they had one voice as well as one mission. And the entire earth was involved in the building of the city and the tower. <coughs> they were of a unified language and singular speech. Mm -hmm. In other words, they had one voice and one mission. Oh, yes. <coughs> And the scripture also says that nothing that they purpose to do 
would be withheld from them. They had great determination. The determination was remarkable. True. They had astounding faith. And they believed that they could have done it. They believed that they could have built that city. Mm -hmm. They had faith in themselves. Nothing was going to hold them back. But church, there are a few lessons that we are to learn here. And the first lesson I want us to learn here is that we must always desire to build. Mm -hmm. 